It's summertime here in beautiful Canyon Lake, Texas, and the views are amazing. The best part about it is we're officially at the lumber stage part of this pyramid beam foundation, which means we are one step closer to having the A-frame up. But just like any construction job, there are always challenges that you have to overcome. So I have a really interesting situation right now. Okay, look, check this out. This is their line, right? Look at this bubble. Look at that. That's a heck no, okay? But even with the bumps in the road, let me show you how you can raise almost 10 foot tall piers all by yourself and get them level with the most basic of tools. Let's go. Hey guys, my name is Daryl Darks. And if you're new to my channel, I just quit my $150,000 a year sales job to start a real estate business. And my wife Lori and I just bought our first property a beautiful one acre lot located in Canyon Lake, Texas, where we're gonna be building a short term vacation rental property from the ground up. And we're bringing you along for the entire journey. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the land and welcome back to the channel. So today is an absolute epic day because I have with me some six by six pressure treated posts that are going to be part of this pier and beam foundation. So we're officially at the lumber stage, which is absolutely insane, super excited. So what I'm gonna do first is actually focus on the four corners of the house. And what I'm gonna do there is make sure those are actually level at each four corners of the house. So the first post is actually 18 inches off the ground. I chose 18 inches because if you know anything about plumbing, you know that your plumber which is me in this case, always needs 18 inches at least under the house to be able to adjust the plumbing if anything were to ever happen. I have plenty of space to do the PVC and the PE piping that I'll be doing in the future. And I'm gonna level it out from that post all the way to the back post on that row. And then from there, go over to the other end of the house, which is 30 feet over. And then I'll go 40 feet up to the very last corner, making sure all those are level. And then once I do that, I'm actually gonna just tie some strings between all the posts. And then from there, not even really think about what I have to cut, just take the tape measure see how many inches it is away from the bottom of the post base to the top of the string, make the cut, and then I'm good. So the first post was sitting just a little bit out of level, and that's because my miter saw was actually cutting out of square. Now, let me tell you how I fixed the post. So I grabbed my belt sander. My belt sander has 36 grit sandpaper on it. Now, if you're not familiar with sanding, the lower the number, and 36 is very low, the rougher the feel would be on the wood, which in this case is good because this 36 grit sandpaper is acting like a planer, which can take off a lot of material very quickly, which is perfect for this. So really the key is, is to make small passes at a time, exercise patience, and then after a few tries, you get a level post. The next thing I did was draw lines in the center of each post. That way, when I come back later with my pink string, I can just literally set the pink string right there in the center of the post and I can visually see that it's in line with the post. I'm gonna line that string up with all the other posts so I know everything is perfectly in line with each other. So just standing back here, it looks straight. Like I'm gonna check it, but it, it looks good. Okay. Okay, I'm a little bit out of level. Just a tad right there is where it's good at. So let's raise it up if I can. Okay, that's a good like inch higher than I thought. Then, then what I marked right there, that's an inch higher. It's like way higher than what I said. Okay, this is like three or four inches up, but it looks level. It's in this, it's in the center. It's not perfect, perfect, but I'm running out of room here. I only got so much beam left. This is like a half of an inch off of being eight feet. Yeah, still within the bubble. Could be like a smidgen higher, like maybe a centimeter or two higher. But yeah, it's in the bubble. So this is the first pier. Let's see if we're level right here. I'm probably like, eh, a sixteenth, maybe a couple sixteenths off, something like that. A few sixteenths off from being totally level. So let's work on that. Whew. Man, what an exciting day. This is crazy. <sighs> Man, 
So let's check it out at 10 feet. 10 feet, it's in the bubble. I have, it's it's all in the bubble, I, but I'm right on the line at 10 feet. At 20 feet, I'm all in the bubble. And at 30 feet, I'm right in the bubble, I'm good. And at 40 feet, at 40 feet, I'm perfect. This is the part where I just gotta slow down for a second and just really think about what I'm doing to make sure I'm not rushing and making mistakes, you know what I mean? This is a slow down moment. So in order to figure out how high the post needed to be, I grabbed my eight foot tall post and I tied some string around it and just walked back and forth looking at the string in order to find the most level height. After that, I actually ended up just grabbing a couple of spare two by fours and I sat them flat on top of the post to find level and that actually ended up being the height that I needed. So this back post ended up being taller than what you're seeing. It's actually eight foot three instead of eight foot tall. Dang, that's so tall. <laughs> that's crazy tall. So I have a really interesting situation right now. So I'm here, the sun's going down. I'm usually never here at the land this late. It's going on eight o'clock and I'm waiting until 8.30 and the sun goes down. But I'm here because I've been using the string line level and I'm pretty sure in this first row, I actually have level, but at the same time, I know some people say you shouldn't actually use a string line level past 25 feet. Well, this is 40 feet. And so I'm just a little bit paranoid. I'm like, hey, I wanna make sure I get this right. So I'm busting out my laser level. Okay, so I know it's not dark yet, but I'm just gonna try this out. So I got the battery right here. I'm gonna pop this on. And then as the sun goes down, I'll be able to see the light more and more. Make sure everything's level. I can see it back here, which is what I want. So that's good. So let me start here. This post right here is what level is based on for the entire house. I'm gonna raise it up and do a little micro adjustment or something because it's a little bit off. Got to make it straight as possible. I don't know why it's doing that. It's kind of like tilting off for some reason. It's not really perfect like I want it to be. So you can see how it's not level. I don't know why that is. Okay, look, check this out. This is their line, right? Look at this bubble. Look at that. That's a heck no, okay? That's terrible. Like this is level. Look how much that's off by. That's crazy. Over 40 feet, are you kidding me? So that is totally frustrating, but the good news is, is that I did watch a video with this old house and everybody respects and loves this old house, right? And so they took a string line with a bubble level, like just like what I'm doing right here, my little cheap level. And they said, just put your bubble level in the middle of where you're trying to find level and if it's level there then you're good and it's perfectly level right there at 20 feet right there in the middle between 20 and 40 perfect it's dead on so i'm just going to use that when i come back tomorrow and just go from there all right y'all it's the next day and i'm here at lowe's and i'm picking up my lumber i have a bunch of lumber it's about to get crazy there we go got her loaded Ooh, that's a lot of lumber my goodness. So these are six by six pressure treated posts and I have eight eight footers and eight 12 footers. Now I don't need 12 foot posts for the house's foundation, but there weren't any 10 footers in my area. So this is what I had to go with. I want to show you guys the level at different points right now. So this is the first post here on the in the front of the house. And you can see the bubbles in the center of the lines. Let's go to the second pier. Okay, boom. So it's right over this row of piers and you can see it's level. Let's go to the very middle of the house. Okay, so here we are in the very center of the house and you can see the bubbles dead on accurate. Let's go to the next post. Okay, so here we are at the third row and you can see the bubble still in the middle. It's looking good. Let's do the very last pier. All right, so here we are at the last pier and you can see the bubble is still within the lines. So last night I unloaded all of this wood. Not all by myself, I did it mainly by myself. There's about uh, 16 pieces that I got. I did 13 of them all by myself and the dentist came over around, I don't know, it was close to nine o'clock and he was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he helped me put these boards right here. So I really appreciate that, Dennis. Thank you very much. And the other thing that's on the agenda for today is finishing, putting up these piers as much as possible. I forgot to buy, I think I need, I need eight 
eight total more of the post base right here. So that kind of sucks. I'm gonna get up as much of them as I can. The real priority for me is getting these outside posts up around all of the perimeter. That's what I want. And then again, down here in the front. Then I can just string lines from, from this, this first pier all the way back in the middle. Same thing for this post right here, from this one right here in the front, and then all the way to the end to make sure that they're in line as possible. Now, what's really cool is that, as you see here, we have a, this is a six by six post. It's a 12 footer sitting on these first two piers. Well, this is just sitting here. I didn't want this post to sit on the ground overnight because this is pressure treated, but it's not the type of pressure treated lumber that belongs in ground, it's above ground. So I just sat it here. And the cool thing is that it's so nice looking. Like, look at it. It looks nice and level. Like, that came out really well. And so it really is helping me trust the, the bubble level even more. So I can't wait to get started today and probably start on this, this outside row right here and knock this part out, get those all level, and then go from there. All right, I'm about to show you guys how to put up an almost 10 foot tall beam all by yourself. Step one, you wanna push these post base brackets apart just slightly. That way the post has a definite square to sit on because sometimes the post base brackets get folded in on themselves. All right, step two, grab this post. I'm gonna put down the side that I did not cut so it has more of a chance of being totally flush. <sighs> Step three, grunt and struggle. Tap these brackets back in place. Just to give it a little bit of holding power. All right, first screw. And I can let go. Next is you get it level and plumb. I take my leveler and I like to screw in opposite sides of the post at a time. Check it on this side. Okay, let me show you guys the results. There you go. All right, you guys, that's it for the video. It's a wrap. So we have a lot of posts up. I got four corners of the house. All those posts are up, as well as some beams behind me on this first row. And then for now, once my generator starts working again, I'll be able to come back and cut the rest of these down to size, get them leveled, get them in place, and then it's on to the beams. So stay tuned for part two of the beams. But for now, I can't wait till you're here. See you guys.